All right, everybody, I was going to go live, but I'm going to leave that up to the big dogs. <laughs> Every time I go live, I get 50 people, 60 people. I realize it's not my thing. So I'd rather just do the videos right here and uh, hope you guys enjoy this video, right? But this video is going to be important tonight. Um, it's definitely about Young Dolph um, the, and, and the new revelations that have coming out. But it's morely about being black in journalism and, and just being black doing media, period. It's definitely a different feel, a different look. When a black guy is tr is serious about what he does, dealing with a serious topic, and I'm out there trying to get the information, but not being like legitimately a journalist, but doing journalism work. And I want to say that. I am so proud of myself now that I think about what I've done and I'm looking at the information that's out now and I'm like, wait a minute. I found that out when I went to Memphis and the crazy thing about it is when I was telling people, one of my tactics is, is something that I knew I had the power and the right of is asking the police questions. Now, some people find that far-fetched, like, no, the cops are not going to tell you anything. Nah, they didn't tell him that. But you guys really see me communicating with the law. Right, you guys really see me going out there. Now, that's my first line of information when it comes to these high-profile cases. Understand that I see the police different. I know real killer cops. I, I grew up around murderous police, for real. The little one or two mostly white Caucasian officer that do innocent, kill a innocent uh, black person, or it could be a white person. White people get killed by the cops, too. Not as much as minorities, a.k.a. minorities, but... I get it, right? And you're supposed to be upset, right? Because any murder, by the way, is wrong. Whether it's the people, their own people doing it, or an officer, or even pilots kill people. Pilots crash planes and kill numerous of people, right? So with that said, I just see the police different because where I'm from, the police really murder, okay? Not just five people a year. Not just, I'm talking a lot of people, uh, a lot. So, well, how I handle police from my experience, that's what makes me different from these guys, right? I have no problem questioning the police in America. I have no problem going up to the cops, asking them questions, because they're there to protect and serve the public. I know they're there to definitely protect businesses, but my thing is I pay your salary sir and i am a representation of the community or communities in the land of america so i have a right to ask you a question about something pertaining to what happened in my community and that's the way i see it and that has been working for me and you know what respectfully they give me the respect back and because they do answer the question not all of them, but some of them do, right? So with that said, I use the same tactics I did in the poll case. And understand the poll case. That is sealed tight. That is classified and wrapped up in airtight situation. And the speculation now is, is this man still alive or not? Cool. That's a whole nother video. We could touch base on that another time. But you guys see me ran with that. And I want to say shout outs to Gene. Shout outs to Gene. Uh, I think his name is copywritten because every time I say his name, his first and last name, you know, YouTube, <laughs> you know how that go with YouTube. But going back to what I have accomplished, and I'm so proud of myself being black journalists. And I want to say shout outs to, um, definitely shout outs to. 109 Black News. He's black. He do journalism like me. He's in the streets. I pray for that man because what we do is is so hard because we don't get the support. You know what I mean? So 
pray for that man. I haven't heard from him. He's a good dude from, from what I know when I went to Memphis. Shout outs to you, 109 Black News. Hopefully, my vision for us come through. And hopefully, you know what I'm saying? We we can allocate some funds from the YouTube so that we can have outlets in Memphis, media outlets, and in NYC, and in Baltimore, Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have a whole vision for this. This is why I say this video is more than just Young Dove. Young Dove only showed that it's not just talk. Young Dove showed you the public. And if you don't know who I am, you can check out the videos that's up. But it showed you that how serious I am because I didn't just talk. And I went to Memphis in the heat, in the midst of the violence. I didn't just go to Memphis now, y'all. I went there. It, right after Dove fell out, like two weeks after when people were dying every day in Memphis, pretty much. Bodies dropping like flies. But I knew I had to go there to get the story. I knew as a black guy doing journalism to be taken serious, I got to work harder than my white counterparts. That's doing independent journalism. I had to, and I had to take the risk. And did the risk pay off financially? No. Absolutely not. But at the, as this thing come to a closure, you can see that what, what I did, if it was taken serious by you the masses, and not just for entertainment, if you guys really was looking at it like, yo, that dude is the real deal, we would have been known this case was solved a long time ago. Because when I went, Three weeks ago, we found out, we found out one of the shooters passed away by me, just like I said, talking to the law. I found out about the Covington shooting, talking to the law. Okay, so I was saying to the big officer, I said, listen, wait a minute. If you guys know one of the shooters are deceased, that means you know who's involved. And that was three weeks ago. I also said, I also said to myself, because I didn't want the officer to know I even had a clue. I also said to myself, wait a minute. So if you're telling me that the same car is connected to another uh, incident and in, in Covington, right, where... A mother and the daughter-in-law was hit, was uh, shot up, right? Okay. And they really was going after her son. That means that young man <clears throat> can solve this case because whoever was coming after him apparently are the same dudes that used the same car that took out Dove. So... I'm like, why is it taking so long? That was three weeks ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. That was uh, December 15th. Okay. That was December 15th, December 16th. Okay. Why it took so long? They, There's no way that they did not know at the time that who was who and who did what. Because... That was three. Here's here's the thing. That was three weeks ago. Now, that's where I'm saying now. Wow! Imagine it just flew over people's head because I told you guys what I heard. I said, "Look, one of the shooters are deceased." I connected the situation in Covington, right, with that with that uh, shooting that happened. And how that young man could really solve the case. Because whoever was going after him, they were the ones involved in Dove's situation. Because it's the same car, the same MO. The, the, they got the bullet casings, correct? So shell casings, whatever whatever uh, forensics, right? Because how would they know those are the same guys? And they are the same guys. And if you look at the, the Covington story, read the Covington story. Covington Police Department are saying they are 100 percent, a million percent certain that the guys 
in the Covington shooting are the same guys in the Dove case based on their evidence and also based on camera evidence as well. Eyewitness evidence as well. So the case was already, it just flew over everybody's head because everybody were more paying attention to, oh, this guy from NYC went to Dolph Hood. That was the focus, right? And, oh, he survived. Yeah, and I'm glad to say I was lucky to survive because it is violent and it's still violent. So with that said, imagine if I was a credible news source. I would have broken that news. I would have literally, what we know now, it would have been broken already. Now, I did ask two females that they, one is from, one was from Arkansas and one was from that neighborhood. She came to visit her friend and I was asking her, what do you think about the CEO Bobby and the, and the straight drop and the, uh, Jojo Splat guys. Like, do you think they're involved as well? And she was telling me that they just capping. She said, nah, they just capping. But she did say, she did say, and I and and I just lumped them all in one box. But she did say, hold up now, the straight drop kid, by what he was wearing, and he had the same clothes on somewhere else. She was more leaning towards him, like, from, and she was also saying that other people saying, yo, he he got something to do with it, but she was saying the other dudes is just straight capping. Now, what we know now is that information was, was like a little shaky because she didn't exactly said for certain, right? But what we do know is look who they looking for. Straight drop, right? So that was definitely part of that 25% of the information that I did not push. Because once I heard one shooter is gone, then I'm like, wait a minute, who took him out? So you're telling me we both did the job. We go back to the house. But one of us don't make it alive. So who knocked him off and why? So I was thinking, being Jamaican, being what I've seen growing up and things I've heard growing up when these things happen, I'm thinking they trying to clean house. Now, I might still be right. I might still be right. Because just because a uh, straight drop made it, that don't mean <laughs> that was part of the plan. He could have just got lucky and escaped the hitters that was there to clean house. Because think about it. As soon as we dropped off the getaway car, one of us is gone. Who took that man out? See, now the plot thickens. And three weeks ago, these things should have been boiling in our minds, but it was so much fake information in this fake eyewitness, this 007 fake witness and this witness and these bloggers just, they were winning over the real. And it was frustrating to see that. Like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You telling me you guys are just clicking on these dudes page that's just saying anything. And I went to the land and spoke Two people that was credible, and I came back with info, and y'all just shut it down. Well, you see how life is funny, cause look, it's three sixty, cause all the things that's coming out now. I already said that three weeks ago. I already said that three weeks ago, based on who I spoke to. Um, with that said, if we going off facts, and talking to credible people. That was one officer I spoke to, and then I went to Makeda's cookie store, and I spoke with, with that family. I spoke with them, and when I spoke to her, and she was explaining that in the interview, her original interview, um, 
this what she really meant to say and i get it because i don't think y'all understand like most people haven't seen a dead body or know of someone that tragically lost their life in your home or in your place of business so she might have been thrown off so i gave her a shot i gave her a chance she gave me a chance as well she spoke and i believed her i believed her but i needed confirmation Remember, I'm from out of town. I don't really know the vibes. It's, I'm in hostile territory. Anything could go left. Anything can go down. Right? Okay, so I said I need to confirm this, but I don't know how. That is when I ran into the officers inside the Walgreens or the CVS. I think it was Walgreens. I'm not, I can't remember. The infamous video when I was recording, okay, the officers. And he didn't know I was recording. None of them knew I was recording. They were just speaking their natural. And they said other things too, you know. They, they said political things. You see, this is how I know about the politics. This is what, I'm going to tell you guys this. Talking to those officers in the Walgreens, I believe it was Walgreens or CVS. There's stuff that I ain't put out. Okay? there's I got footage I ain't put out. Okay? There's footage I ain't put out. Because there was two violent things that I filmed in down there. One of them I kind of put some information out, some of the footage out, which is in the garage. But anyway... The officer was speaking freely. He was a white officer, but he was frustrated about the case. Very frustrated and very upset. It was like personal to him because he must have seen a lot. He must have seen plenty. And nobody probably never asked this man. Remember, some officers that go through certain things, they suffer from PTSD. I believe that's the name of that. Maybe he doesn't have a wife or a support system. He's a human like us. So when I'm talking to him and, hey, officer, how's your day? How's it going? You know, I'm interested to know about, you know, this Dove case and how do you feel about it? And did this happen and that, 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 because I already spoke to the big officer earlier. I just came from the cookie shop now. See, now I'm rolling as a journalist. This is what you call, no, I'm coining it, riding the wave. I'm on a roll, right? All right. So I'm talking to him, and the man just started talking. And he said, yeah, and we even had to protect the Cookie family. We had to protect them for a long time because they were getting death threats, right? When he said that, that confirmed to me Wait, why are you guys protecting the people that's supposed to be involved in taking out this man? So I said, wait a minute. Are you seriously telling me that tax paying dollars and law enforcement resource went into protecting the Cookie family, the infamous Cookie family? He was like, yes. So I said, why are everybody saying they got something to do with it? <laughs> That officer laughed like he never laughed before. He laughed so hard and chuckled. He said, man, get out of here with that. The Cookie family got nothing to do with Dobbs' situation. So I said, wait, you saw the tape? He said, I didn't see the tape, but my department saw the tape. Meaning MPD people saw the tape, right? They said they got nothing to do with this. In fact, he said they were helpful. They gave us what we want. They answered the questions. We can't find anything where they're complicit in this situation. So there you go. Real journalism. So that was three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Now, for those that want to run with these stories and if it makes you feel good for your imagination... All I'm trying to say is that, look, there's the facts and then there's your belief, right? And I'm not here to, to go against nobody's belief. But I presented the facts and you guys could take it how you want to take it from there, 
I did my part, right? Now, with that said, this is just part one. We're going to see what happens after this. Now, as far as straight drop, like I said, the young lady did lean towards him, but she was saying it's a lot of capping going on, so she's not sure, but she put the what he was wearing to another video, you know, and she was trying to say that, and she also said that's what a lot of people saying in the neighborhood that he has something to do with it, but they just don't have the 100% proof, right? Okay. Now, I would take, I would say, okay, I didn't push that narrative because I didn't have 100% proof. But by me going to the land and asking the questions, and this is all I was saying. Uh, right now, I see uh, a guy named Sko. If you don't know his channel, you can check his channel out. He just went down there and did his part, did his investigation or see if what people say makes sense vividly, right? He did it vividly. So you guys could go on his page, check it out. So it is the few, but then the many is just putting out the propaganda and the stories and the myths and the movies. But I'm so proud of myself, man. And we're going to continue and I want to continue. And right now we have a kid, his face is out there. Now, people just don't run with that, by the way. Just because the boys put out this dude picture, but there's nothing behind it. They just put the picture out there, but what did they say behind that? Like, what was they reasoning? What what evidence do they have? What What is going on, right? All we know is straight drop. Wanted. Dobbs case, right? So that's what we have right now. But the bigger story is going to be the motive. It's going to be the why. Why did you do this? And him, if he talks, it will reveal the dark side of the streets and the politics in the streets. Period. So I don't want to go too deep tonight on other information. This is just a taste a sample an introduction right the first breakdown of the situation and we're going to see what comes out tomorrow if any new thing come out tomorrow but we're going to focus the next video we are going to focus more on justin johnson aka straight drop we are going to focus more the beef i got some more information about why there was a split in the hood over some dude that passed away and also how close he was to Dov. That's another thing. And Key Glock. Right? So we're going to put all those revelations out. But this video tonight, I want to say thank you, everybody, that really supported, that believed in me. I didn't just say what I was going to do. I did what I was going to do. I love journalism. I love it. And I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Keep supporting, keep, you know, showing love, and let's just keep going, and it's only going to get better over here. Like I said, I got a whole vision for this thing, so I can't wait for it to come to fruition based on you guys' support. Rest in peace to young Dolph. We also going to get into his family, me, me seeing the family, being around the family at the memorial. We're also going to talk about these politician dudes. All of a sudden, they coming out now on the news and all that, right? But we're going to get into all of that. Sean and HD TV, you know, let's say our prayer, not only for Memphis, but to all the hoods, because our hoods are being, you know what's going on in the hood right now. You know, these kids ain't playing, and, you know, we got to pray. We got to pray. Rest in peace to Young Dove, and everybody, shout outs to you. Keep supporting Sean and HD TV. Black journalism right here.